I wish to make a video response to Righteous Dude 93 regarding school bullying. Unfortunately, one of the things that you lose first when you start getting older is your eyesight. I have a letter that I wrote to a school board regarding a school bullying incident in my city that I would like to read and elaborate on. So if I'm looking down at the paper, it's because I'm having a lot of trouble reading. And just forgive me, listen to it, because it is very, very important. And I think this subject needs to be discussed and discussed at length. Is it that time of year when parents who care about their children ponder whether or not they made a good decision last year about where their children were placed? Do they remain where they were entrusted or was that trust be betrayed? I currently have two daughters in certain school board. This is the tale of one of them who I believe that the certain school board failed miserably. After much research and careful thought, it was decided to enroll both, one after another, in a certain school. I, as a single dad, decided from day one I would be involved as much as I could in my children's education. We became heavily involved in all the school activities, fundraising for charities such as Nichol Nichols for Nicaragua, Honduras Relief, social services, closed drives, food bank drives, and other charities. We worked very hard to make our chosen school a vibrant learning environment for our children. Our school council, of which I was member, worked very hard to ensure the well-run administration kept one of the best tutorial staffs ever. Unfortunately, since Mr. <clears throat> has taken over all our hard work was for naught, and now my younger daughter can't wait to finish grade 6 so she can leave. We campaigned hard using every media possible to fight the proposed closure of this certain school. I even promised <clears throat> and Mr. <clears throat> I would purchase a house in this district if I were successful. I have just renewed my mortgage on the house that we bought here in <clears throat> Last year, my eldest daughter left that certain school with the following teacher's remarks. <clears throat> Performed well on her provincial achievement tests, achieving honor marks in language arts, math, social studies, and science. Her math score was exceptional. She has all the skills, ability, and talent necessary to continue as an honor student in junior high. Then came the difficult choice of which school to send her. A few students from her old school were going to <clears throat> and <clears throat> really wanted to take Italian so she could eventually go to Italy and visit the Vatican on an expedition. The certain school seemed to be the perfect choice except for the fact that she was coming from a school of 194 kids to a school of over 790 children. I was extremely worried about how she would cope and the effect it would have on her. I made my concerns known to the administration of the school and I was assured all would be done to provide her with all that was required to make her transition as painless as possible. The amount of pain she suffered at the hands of staff and fellow students has just become apparent to me recently. She was hospitalized after slashing her arm in a self-mutilation ritual, a manifestation of how little self-esteem she had left. Can any of you understand what it's like for a father to come home, the horror of seeing your daughter mutilated with blood smeared all over the walls and droplets of blood painted on the walls? She had a poster board in her room that contained all the pictures of her friends and all the pictures of our family. That poster board was covered with gray duct tape and she took nail polish and painted teardrops of blood all over the duct tape. Then she cut her wrists and took blood from her wrists and painted droplets of blood all over the walls of her bedroom. It was with absolute horror that I walked into that room and saw her in the pile of dirty clothes that was in the corner bleeding. I rushed her to the hospital where she was kept overnight in the psychiatric ward and declared to be a cutter and that she would have to receive extensive psychiatric evaluation. I had no idea what the hell was going on. I had no idea that any of this was possible or any of this was going to happen. I came home and this is the way I found my daughter. 
And it was only when I started cleaning up the horror that in the room that I found her diary hidden under the bed. And I started reading it. And I learned of the horror that she went through in that school. The constant torment that she suffered at the hands of the students and at the hand of a particular teacher who treated her like dirt. I mean, this school had a kid come to the school with a mini propane torch branding other kids. And the school knew about it. And they did nothing. And this school had been expelled and suspended from three other schools before he was put into my daughter's school. And nobody, nobody did anything. When I became aware of this, I was outraged and attempted to find the last name of this particular student to confront his parents. I was told that due to the Privacy Act, no information could be released about this student or the school could be sued. Well, what about my right? My right to, school, to sue the school for failing to ensure my child's well-being and for failing what the school board claims as its mission. I had to leave work early every day for three weeks and follow this particular student in hiding, hoping to find his home, just like some madman on a quest. I was finally successful and confronted his parents to no real avail. They couldn't care less. The police department refused to intervene because of the age and because all the witnesses were under 12. We have just come back from a week in and around a certain city and three weeks visiting the historical sites of where I was born. born. <sighs> this is an awful lot to deal with four days before enrollment. It seems to me that my daughter had a principal more interested in who was legally parked or was in or not in their loading zones rather than ensuring the well-being of his students. I was told when I complained to look at it from the other side. But you know, I entrusted your school division with the well-being of my child and you sent me back a child that was emotionally and physically scarred. Or did no one know what was going on in her class? Explain to me what I am supposed to do with my daughter now. This letter was typed with one finger typing and no spell check. We cannot all afford the luxury of having a secretary of the board sign the letters in our absence and send them on our behalf. If somebody is bullying you, tell someone. Find an adult that you can trust. Find somebody in your corner. Tell someone. Do whatever you have to do to bring it out in the open. Because if it isn't brought out in the open and it's hidden, it's going to continue and it's going to evolve and it's going to get worse. And maybe, just maybe, you will be pushed to the edge and you will attempt to take your own life. I lost my daughter. I haven't seen her for three years. My heart was ripped apart and I bled and I cried and then it turned to stone. I have seen so much pain in my life. If you have pain in yours, do whatever you have to do to get help and make things right. Bring the evil of this world into the open because it is the only way that you're going to find a solution, an end to the pain.